Morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us again for our time of prayer, worship, and the Word. As we open, let me read this to you. Psalm 94, verse 17. If God had not been there for me, I never would have made it. The minute I said, I'm slipping, I'm falling, your love, God took hold and held me fast. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for the many times in our lives, Lord, that your love took over, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for the many times that we were probably in dire straits. We were probably in the place of almost giving up. We were probably in a place of almost losing everything. Yet your love stepped in once again, time and time again, and turned things around for us, held us fast, kept us where we are. Thank you, Lord God, that our family, ourselves, Lord, our friends are in the place of your provision, the place of your blessing, because of your love that sustains us and keeps us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us worship God right now.
Lord, for your love that sustains us and keeps us. And even as we look at your word today, Lord God, we pray that you would open our hearts, open our eyes, Lord, to your truth. Continue to change us by the power of your word and form the image of Jesus in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. We're in Psalm 94 today. Let me read a few of the verses. I'm reading from the Message Bible. Verse 1, God put an end to evil, avenging God, show your colors. Judge of the earth, take your stand, throw the book at the arrogant. God the wicked, get away, uh, God the wicked, get away with murder. How long will you let this go on? They brag and boast and crow, and crow about their crimes. They walk all over your people. God, exploit and abuse your precious people. Take out anyone who gets in their way. If they can't use them, they kill them. They think God isn't looking. Jacob's God is out to lunch. Well, think again, you idiots, fools. How long before you get smart? Do you think ear maker doesn't hear? Eye shaper doesn't see? Do you think the trainer of nations doesn't correct the teacher of Adam? Doesn't know? God knows all right knows your stupidity, sees your shallowness, how blessed the man you train, God the woman you instruct in your word, providing a circle of quiet within the clamor of evil while a jail is being built for the wicked. God will never walk away from his people, never desert his precious people. Rest assured that justice is on its way and every good heart put right. 
I remember going on road trips in my home province of Negros when I was still very young. Uh, during those days, there was no nice stops along the way to cut the road trip shorter. If you, uh, if you wanted delicacies from the different towns, you would buy it on the side of the road and eat it in the car. And that was a challenge for someone like me who had issues with motion sickness. And during those times, uh, the roads were, some of it were paved, some of it were dirt. Not every car had air conditioners. So by the time we got to the place we were going, it was easy to appreciate where we were. You were glad that the road trip was over. And considering that we were young and some of my friends were there, we could always find a way to enjoy the place and have fun the whole day. We live in a world that is so focused on getting our goals, getting to success and getting our dreams that we forget something very important. The journey, the time for perseverance, the challenges we face, the success, the, the challenges we face towards success prepares us for the success as well. I've been learning this past few weeks that our journey with God is just as important as our destination with God. Great faith is established through a journey facing fear, doubt, and crisis. Unconditional love is only established and and understood when, our, when every possible love condition is challenged and conquered. True faithfulness is only established after conquering continuous temptation, obstacles, and options to be unfaithful. Knowing God more and more is not established by extensive reading, but a lifelong walk with God in the good times and the bad times. The journey makes a difference. God uses the detours, the mountains, the potholes of our journey to form us in His image. As, as I read Psalm 94, I could not help but notice the struggle, the anger, the fear, and the frustration of the psalmist towards the wicked that was around him and in, in, his, in his community. Verse 1, he says, God put an end to evil, avenging God. Show your colors, judge of the earth, take your stand. <coughs> Throw the book at the arrogant. God, the wicked, get away with murder. How long will you let this go on? He says, God, show your colors. Throw the book at them. There's, there are laws to prevent this, to stop them, but they keep doing it. When will this stop? God, it's almost like the psalmist said, God, it's time to stop this. God, it's time to judge them. God, it's time to throw the book at them now. Verse 6, the psalmist says, take, they take out anyone who gets in their way. If they can't use them, they kill them. They think God isn't looking. Jacob's God is out to lunch. Well, think again, you idiot fools. How long before you get smart? Do you think ear maker doesn't hear, eye shaper doesn't see? Do you think the trainer of nation doesn't correct, the teacher of Adam doesn't know? I think this is not just, this is not just a declaration of God's character and power. It's more like a complaint that they get away with their evil. It's almost like the psalmist saying, Lord, do you hear them say this? You're not here. You don't see. Do you see the struggle, the feeling of helplessness, the frustration of the psalmist? And he's trying to reconcile in his mind that God is a God who knows and God is a God who sees and a God, is, God, God is a God of, of control, uh, who's in control. And yet what he sees around him is wicked, is all, wickedness is all over the place. And he's pleading and asking in the midst of his anger and frustration, Lord, let them see who you truly are. In a sense, this is the stage of the journey of the psalmist. This is the road he's on now. This is the struggle he's facing. I would call this, this is his forming stage, his learning stage. This is a preparation stage. He is in this crucial, important, and valuable season of the psalmist's journey. Just like the psalmist, we are in a crucial, important, and valuable season in our journey with God. The future of our family, our nation, and ourselves will be shaped by this season in our lives. 
The psalmist declares truths that shape him even more. And I want to look at some of those truths. Verse 12, the first one, he says, How blessed the man you train, God, the woman you instruct in your word. Our world tells us that experience is the best teacher. I believe experience is a good teacher and sometimes a painful teacher. But I believe God and His Word are the best teachers. Let the Word of God give you an assessment of the situation and lead you towards God's purpose. Let the Word of God show you the problem and point you to real solutions. Let the Word of God give you tools and weapons to fight towards victory. Use the Word to fight the Word of God. Let the Word of God show you the hope and the certainty of our future. See, science and medical experts have helped us understand and plan for this pandemic. But science and medicine is in a dead end in the many of the problems that this pandemic has created. Science cannot do anything about hopelessness that is all over the world. But God has a definite future for you. Science has no solutions to the greed, the anger, and the restlessness all around us. But God continues to transform the heart of man all over the world. Science has nothing to say about the, your loss of business, your job, your loss of your job, your loss of op opportunity. But God and His Word has a lot to say about what He has in store for you. Science and medicine helps us now, but it is helpless about our future. But God and His Word holds our future. Let this season be a season God's Word takes over our lives. Verse 13 says this, Providing a circle of quiet within the clamor of evil while a jail is being built for the wicked. I am very thankful for friends and leaders who have helped me understand what is before and what is ahead of us. I'm very thankful for the support, the simple phone calls, the prayers extended towards me, my family, and even others. But just like the psalmist, he wasn't alone in his struggles. His community was with him. His nation was with him. In times of crisis, in difficult times, in suffering times, all, all of us want to help as much as we would like to. But how can we help when we're facing our own challenges and pressures? How can we find financial help from a friend who lost just as much or even worse than we have? How can we find a well of courage from a friend who's wrestling with his own fears and threats and doubts as much as we are? How can we find a safe place when persecution is community-wide, national, or even global? We say God is with you. The psalmist knew that, yet he was distraught and he was frustrated. The psalmist had to find his circle of quiet, his circle of peace in God. He could find it because he says God is with him. So like the psalmist, we need to find our circle of quiet. We need to find our peace in God. We need to find our hope in God. God has not changed our future because our present circumstances are in crisis. We need to find our circle of quiet in God. The goal is not to be independent from everyone, but to grow in total dependence on God. Lastly, verse 15, rest assured that justice is on its way and every good heart put right. As we have, I I'm sure, we have our own experience of persecution and injustice where we cried, just like the psalmist, God judge them now. But I realized that some, the seeming delay of justice was God's chance that He gave to us to get it right. I realized if not for the grace of God, I would probably be one of the evil persons and probably an instrument of persecution and injustice just like the others are. I am grateful that I got the grace of God instead of God's justice. God's justice will come. It will be established, but it will come in His time and His purpose. The wait for God's justice is not license 
for evil. Instead, it is everybody's chance for His grace. Let me end with a scripture we opened up in prayer. If God had it been there for me, I, I would have not made it. The minute I said, I'm slipping, I'm falling, your love, God, took hold of me fast. In God's circle of quiet, in God's circle of peace, you will find the love of God and you will see and experience Him holding you up in control of your life, establishing His purpose, no matter what's happening around you. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that we are secure in your hands no matter what happens. We can trust that you work out your best, your purpose, and your will no matter what's happening around us. Let us now worship God again. How strong this love that burns in me, burns in me. Oh, how strong this love burns in me, it burns in me. Thank you, Lord, for your presence that's always with us. Let us close with this. And in God's presence, this is God's reality and God's desire for you. Numbers chapter 6, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. Have a blessed day. See you again next time.